Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And if you're in the US, well, it's Thanksgiving season, so happy Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoyed it if you celebrate. Um, anyway, let's jump into it. I'm hoping to make this video a short video. Um, so a few people have complained, and I've noticed it myself when I'm editing the video, that my keyboard makes a lot of noise. Um, and generally, I'll put my Yeti Blue mic in front of me and so it would tend to pick up all those typing so i've done some tests and i'm going to use another microphone that i have and it is not it doesn't appear to pick up as much noise so when i tested the yeti was picking was just really sensitive and picking up a lot of that keyboard noise but today i'm not going to use the yeti i'm going to use a totally different microphone Hopefully it's clear enough. If you notice anything strange in terms of how it sounds, that's why we'll keep iterating until we get to something that is not as annoying. I know I, I've heard it and when I record it, I just figured it out. I didn't have a solution at the time, so I didn't spend any time on it. Okay, with that out of the way, um, if you're here, you like the material, um, sorry for the delay in getting stuff out. I keep working on trying to get this stuff done faster and more frequently but just bear with me until I try and get back on schedule. Just a lot of things going on in my life right now. Um, but I hope to get back there. Um, if you like the material, please subscribe. If you're not subscribed, well, if you're subscribed, thank you very much. Um, if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? If you like the material, definitely hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you do um, get notified when I post a video. And, you know, let me know on a video, thumbs up. Let me know if you like the videos, put a thumbs up or a comment. If you think that there's something like the noise or whatever you think can be improved, constructive feedback, constructive feedback is definitely welcome. I always encourage that. So I don't think these videos are perfect by any stretch of your imagination. If you have suggestions and all that stuff, do leave them. I read the comments. I might take a while to get back to you on them, but I do read them. So, all right. So let's jump into the video. So here's what I want to do. In the last video, I showed you how we sort of developed this module and we were putting, uh, developing a reusable module um, that's separate from application. Previously, what we did was we had one module where our application was in it and there were packages and then we could make some packages, hidden and all this other stuff from other packages. That's all cool. But now we want to up our game a little bit and say we didn't have application that have dependencies or want to put in packages that are in other modules and those modules might be from our company or other places. And so how do we handle that? So what we decided to do in the last video was actually create two modules. We had a module for our application and let me just start off by doing this. Let's do copy minus R and then I'll do um, part four and then we'll do a part five. And let's just go into part five and let's see what we're talking about here. Instead of just yapping about it, let's just kind of go look at some code. And so let's open that up. And then, of course, we're going to zoom in because I know some people are on small devices and they just like seeing this stuff like really big. Uh, hopefully that's not too big. So if you look, we have two modules. So we have an app module and we give it the name, very creative name, app module. Then we have a module A. And this was called module A, of course, because what else would we call it? But you can notice that how um, my um, VS Code is complaining because it's saying that our Go Please, which is the Go Live sort of plugin that we're using, or I'm using at least, um, likes a one module in the root of the project and doesn't like opening a file that has multiple modules, which is what this is, right? It has multiple Go module files. So I'll close this. And instead, what I'll do is I'll say, open um, in the app project one vs code and then i'll say open another one in the module a um, project so now i have two vs code instances open and let's just sort of stagger them in some way that we can be able to just easily click on them and find them so i'll do something like that all right so with this, you can see now, um, like I said, we have this module here with some several packages, right? We went through all that, talking about how the module work as this way of, you know, versioning your stuff once you put it on a repo, but also as a way of managing your dependencies, right? Um, so I went through all of that. What I want to address in this video, which is what I started working on in previous video, is when you start developing a module, how do you get um, past, it seems like there's a chicken and head problem here, right? 
where we want to use module A in our, or our packages from module A in our main application here. But at the same time, we're also developing module A. It's not on a repository, it's not in a Git repo on some host that we can actually reference because we're still developing it. And we saw that how we use the edit to sort of um, fix that issue. If we go back here to application, we will go to the mod file and we see it how we had this replaced. Good. So I want to spend a little bit of time and show you exactly what that might look like if we were thinking about using a Git repo um, because to, with the simple name, maybe, maybe it didn't quite hit home exactly what we we're doing. So that is what I want to fix in this um, video. So I think this is going to be a short video. So let's do this. Let's imagine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my module A directory and I am going to remove this module file. And what I'm going to do is also I'm going to remove some of uh, the other stuff that we have in um, our cache, go um, cache, right? So these are information about go bills and our, um, packages and stuff. So I'm going to empty our cache. Okay, so now my system is clean. It doesn't know anything about any go libraries or module packages, rather, right? Go packages. So we have that done. So let's now imagine that I have a git hub.com slash triversity account. And in this account, notice I have some reports. It's go on the run repo, blah, blah, blah. But let's say within go on the run, uh, maybe um, I have some other directories and all this other stuff, right? Now, this guy has a go module already, but let's just ignore that for, for a minute, right? Um, maybe it is a different directory that I'll put this stuff in, right? Um, so let's just create a module there. So I say um, go mod in it, and I give the full repo. So it's going to be github.com, github.com for triversity. And I want to call this thing like maybe episode, you know, MSC 007. So that's the the package that I want. Oh, actually, um, and um, that's not a package. To, um, the project and maybe there's this module A. So that's let's say this is the full path to my module A that I want to put on Git repo, right? So I'll just do go in it there. And notice all this did is it's created a go that mod file and it says module and this is the full module path. This is where you find it on this repo. Going to the go to github.com, go into the Striversity directory and going to MSC07 module A. Now, we just went to Striversity and there was not a, you know, MSC07 directory there. And certainly within there, okay, we can look at all the repositories, there are eight of them, but there's definitely none that says, you know, MSC08. So it's not there, but that's why I intend to store, store it, right? Save it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, this path. And so I'll go back to my main um, application and I will say that instead what I want to use is this package A. So I want to use this package that's in this module and it's stored at this location. Again, notice it's telling me that it cannot find this thing and we know it's not there, right? Go wants to go download this thing. Um, if I go, let's, let's, let me open up a second terminal here. If I go to my app directory and I say go mod tidy, it's going to try and find this. So you see find in module this and it cannot find it. It wants to download it, but it, it sees that I'm using it, but it can't find it because it's not located there. So the only way to get around this is you don't want to modify your application that way. So what you do is within here now you say, oh, this thing that you were looking for, this module, it is located somewhere else. And so I'm actually going to take out all of this because um, I want, um, let's just even make it easier. I'll take out all that and just leave a simple module, go application module. As a matter of fact, um, I'll even delete the go application module. I'll remove it and I'll say remove 
go that mod and you could see it says this file is deleted because it's crossed out there and I'll create another one go mod in it and I'll do that but instead I'll put app one here for my module right so this is also on that repo okay so cool that's fine but I still my application my main application here is still trying to read this stuff of course it doesn't have any information about where logros is either but we can easily fix that by doing go mod tidy but we know that always going to have an issue downloading this so that's why that replace is so important and i clean up and then i type um, go mod edit i can say you know minus replace right and what i want to replace what i want to replace this um reference to this guy this module i want to replace a reference to that by saying oh that is actually in my previous directory right like a parent directory and go down but i could give like the whole path to where this is right um i can literally say that though it's in you know all of this stuff here wherever this is located but you know it's just easy for me to just say oh it's actually here it's in that directory and so if I do that, and now I look here, you can see that message went away, right? And so now if I do go mod, and I do tidy, it's, it knows where to find it. So it went and found Logarus, and it now knows where to find that package. Again, it's not there on the repository yet because I did not push this code for this module up there. So while I'm developing, I can do this. I can say, use this replace. I think this is really awesome because not only you can use it to replace something that's local, but you could say it's somewhere else. Like, let's say, for example, the, the project was moved or something. And so let's clean up our screen, um, make everything nice and clean, and we'll see if this works. So let's go to our application here. Now that I've said to replace this, and I can do go build, and let's see if it builds. And yeah, it builds successfully. So I'll rem remove this because it builds successfully, and I'll add a new something to one of my um to my module here so module packet c i'll bring in c and i'll say um key um let's call it secret key equals to that's our secret key and so now i want to be able to use it in um my main application and so um i can do that love Russ. S E C R E T secret key and then that was in packet C so we'll do that see that secret key and there we go and you can see we don't have an, any mess error messages and no, it knows exactly where to pull in packet C from and so now we can go back here and we can clean up and we can say go build again and then of course when we run our application we should see it how we have our secret key so um, I just wanted to clarify exactly what we were doing with this whole replace thing. I felt like the other example, because I use such a simplified name that people may not really connect at all. That's just a module name that's in a repo. And so that's why I wanted to redo this really short video to show you that how, yeah, your module name that's in some repo that's also on some remote site, for example, and you can still use replace. Now, in the next video, we'll continue, we'll get past the way I think that oh, this is clear now. I felt like it wasn't too clear. I guess I want this video to be short, so I'll cut it here. Take it, see you in the next video.